Hi everyone, so today I wanted to give you an update on how I'm getting on with my fight against hyperpigmentation. I've also discovered something new that has worked really well for my hyperpigmentation in the last week, so I'm going to share that with you. If you watched my previous video on um, my preferred ink, the inky list products for hyperpigmentation, then you probably already know that I've discovered that actually eating licorice root makes a huge difference. Right, so just to take you back, so you have an idea of where I started this whole journey. I had hyperpigmentation on both sides of my face and my hyperpigmentation um, started from about 2009. I was I had um, acne my my dermatologist put me on um, some medication to help with my acne what I didn't understand when my dermatologist said to me to use sunscreen was she meant use sunscreen yeah she didn't drum that bit into my head so I was on a year-long treatment for acne and um, I sometimes use sunscreen and then I think maybe about a week of trying to wear sunscreen and I mean mind you this was 11 12 years ago right where all sunscreen were white so you would put it on your face and your skin would look pasty so I think about after a week of trying to wear sunscreen every day I stopped and by the end of my year-long treatment I had severe hyperpigmentation so that was the beginning of my hyperpigment my hyperpigmentation and with lack of knowledge, I saw online that you could use chemical peels. And so I started using chemical peels and again, I didn't protect my skin. And that actually worsened my hyperpigmentation. So I've been fighting my hyperpigmentation for a good 12 years or so now. When I started this journey, uh, before I started using Cispera, I had um, a half butterfly wink on each side of my face. So just to give you an idea, um my progression i've just washed my face there's no product on my face now so i had a half butterfly on this side of my face which began from about here and it went into my hairline and it came all the way down here and a little bit of my cheek and um so it was one block right and then on this side of my face again it was a half butterfly started from about my eyebrow, went into the hairline and came up on the cheek. The mark on this side of my face, which is my left side, was much bigger on the mark on my right side. And if you're watching this, I suspect that you have hyperpigmentation yourself and I suspect that you've done some research into it, how it forms and how to reverse it and all sorts. Right, so from my experience, there's been such a huge progression. I've been using Cispera for about 20 weeks now, and I have seen that it's gone down, how much of the hyperpigmentation shows has gone down a lot, but this product works very slowly. I can see that it is going to work overall, but I think I have to give myself maybe till end of the year, maybe something like 10 months to see significant results. So my uh, my use with Cispera, I'm happy with that, but it's moving very slowly. And somehow I started thinking last week, what would happen if I started formulating products myself with things like kojic acid, hydroquinone. I know hydroquinone is meant to be um, illegal in most parts of the world, but when you've got hyperpigmentation, you can't help yourself. You think of all sorts. Right guys, so um, I literally just washed my face and I didn't want to put any product on my face until I spoke to you guys. So bear with me. I need to moisturize because my skin is beginning to dry out now. So I'm going to put pure vitamin E oil on my face and I shall carry on speaking to you. So last week I was thinking um, I like to formulate products and um, put a certain amount of active ingredients that helps to um, inhibit your tyrosinase. If you've got hyperpigmentation then you need to understand what that means if you've never heard that phrase before please google and understand that um inhibiting your tyrosinase halts melanin production and it slows melanin production so that you know um hyperpigmentation is 
just simply a lot of um, melanin that is accumulated in a particular part of your skin. So if you use a product like tyrosinase um, inhibitors, then it slows down your melanin production. Right. Okay, so I started thinking I would create my own formulations and the key ingredients I was I thought of what I thought of and what I whittled it down to are two different lists. So I thought, you know what, I would like to make a product using hydroquinone or kojic acid or alpha albutane or licorice root um, extract. And so I started looking into all these products. Now, of course, with hydroquinone being illegal, it was going to be very difficult to get my hands on it legally, right? So that was not something I was looking into so much. And also there's a downside to hydroquinone. Um, it can easily cause your skin to become easily irritated. It can easily um, cause your skin's barrier to be impaired. It can easily, you know, end up giving you other problems that you didn't anticipate in the first place. So hydroquinone was not top of my list. And next on my list was licorice, uh, sorry, kojic acid. And again, I wrote off kojic acid because again, kojic acid also is um, highly irritant. It easily um, causes your skin to be uh, sensitized and it can cause you um, skin conditions. So it wasn't on my high list. So that went into the bin list. Next on my list again was um, licorice or licorice root extract. And I thought to myself, I've been using products that contain licorice root extract the past year. Since I started, you know, like my real fight, understanding hydro, um, hyperpigmentation, how it forms and, you know, like what exacerbates it and all those kind of stuff. So I decided that this time I was going to go for licorice root tea or licorice, um, licorice root sticks. So that's what I got, licorice root sticks. And guys, the improvement has only occurred since last week. So at the beginning of last week, when I started taking uh, licorice, <coughs> excuse me, licorice root sticks, my hyperpigmentation was actually showing far more than it is now. And then two days ago, I noticed that after five days of chewing a stick, not even a full stick, um, I usually chew a stick over three days. So I more or less break each stick into three parts. So two days ago, I thought I was standing in front of the mirror and I thought to myself, oh, my hyperpigmentation is not showing so much. And then I started thinking to myself, oh my goodness, what, what am I doing differently? Because I've got a tendency of using products from my professional trolley. So I started thinking and the only thing that I have changed in the last week really is since I started chewing um, the licorice root sticks. So I think that if you're looking to reverse your hyperpigmentation, then you should definitely look into chewing licorice root sticks. I don't know if you will get the same results having the tea. Um, when I was looking for the sticks, I noticed that you can easily find um, the grated root as well that you can make tea with. So I don't know if that will be potent enough, but I'm happy chewing the stick. I did grow up chewing stick anyway growing up in Ghana. And these sticks are very easy to chew. They have a sweetness in them. So it's very, very easy. Um, so what I do, simply break it off. I've already chewed some for today, so I don't want to overdo it. Right, guys, listen, I know that when you are trying to reverse any skin consent, we tend to overdo things. Don't overdo it. Take it slowly and... Um, because one thing about natural ingredients as well is you can overuse something and actually have the opposite effect, right? So, you know what? I didn't even bother to wash these sticks when they were delivered. I've just been popping them into my mouth, chewing them. But I imagine that they've already been cleaned from whatever factory they've come from. Um, usually in Africa, people that sell sticks would um, scrape some of the back off so this does look like some of the back has been taken off and um if there's anything toxic on here it's already gone inside and the the benefit to me is that you know whatever toxic um items that are on the stick 
seems to be reversing my hyperpigmentation so I'm fine with that right so when I break a piece just pop it in my mouth my mom is going to kill me if she sees me chewing stick on camera <laughs> so in Ghana it's not polite to be chewing stick so I'm finding it very difficult to be chewing the stick on camera so I've just broken a little piece in my mouth and it has this sweetness and a tangy taste to it at the same time so all i do is just chew it suck out as much of the juices until the spongy substance that's left behind in my mouth completely has no more taste left and that's usually when i would um, spit it out right guys so this is the trick that's working for me this week for hyperpigmentation I feel like I should call this hyperpigmentation news because <laughs> now I found something that works who knows I might find something else that works next week and I may have to you know do a new update all right guys thank you so much for watching and if you do try the licorice root please let me know how you get on with it whether it's the tea version or the sticks the cheapest nuts compared to how much I pay for the Cispera um, cream I think this costed about 12 pounds I can't remember and it's a whole pack of it is 250 grams and going by the rate I'm chewing this it's not I'm not going to run out anytime soon right guys if you're going to um, invest in licorice roots please do your own research a quick search on Google told me that you can uh, over consume licorice root so please look into this people with certain conditions it's not appropriate for you so please have a read to see if you have any underlying health condition and if there's any repercussions um my quick research on google told me that if you've got acne or eczema licorice root is also equally very good for you all right guys thank you so much for joining me today take care